All right, hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to set up this uh, wireless device to connect to your Raspberry Pi for running RetroPie and Emulation Station. Um, you know, the first thing I did is I connected my two joysticks into the ports. Here's my two joysticks, black ones connected to port one on the right here, and this uh, orange one is connected to uh, port two. Notice the ports are numbered one and two on here, so we know this is joystick one and joystick two. Then uh, what we're gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna show you how to connect it to this Raspberry Pi. I've got my small screen and a keyboard. The actual Raspberry Pi is back here and it's connected uh, to this. So I've, I'm just running the stock uh, Raspberry Pi on Ubuntu. Uh, so, so first step is to turn on the um, device here. As I turn the switch on, it's going to try to detect the uh, paddles and joystick, and you'll see a blinking C, meaning that it's trying to connect with Bluetooth. I haven't configured the, the Raspberry Pi yet for Bluetooth, so I'll show you that in a second. But uh, I'm going to press some of the buttons here. You'll see that as I press the buttons, uh, the different buttons light up, uh, indicating that the uh, device is working. The red button is the fire button. Uh, it simultaneously pushes both fire buttons and then these are the other buttons. Notice I'm in common mode because as I press the buttons both uh, sticks are uh, lighting up as you can see. So first thing I want to do is I want to go to single mode because Linux and Raspberry Pi uh, for some reason on these Bluetooth devices it cannot see two devices so we're going to be mapping both of these devices to a single joystick on the Raspberry Pi. And that's the trick to get dual joysticks working. So I'm going to put it into single mode. You have to press all four of these buttons simultaneously. Notice it's in double mode. I'm going to press one more time. Now it's in single mode. That means both data from both of these are going to be sent to a single joystick um, on the Raspberry Pi. And I'll show you that in a second. Next, as I move these sticks around, notice that you're getting some movement. So I know, and I'll move the second joystick, again, movement, so I know the device is operating. So now we're ready to pair the device. So on my Raspberry Pi, um, I'm going to go ahead and um, use the mouse to go to my Bluetooth devices here in the corner. And I want to click Add Device. And it's going to look for uh, all my devices that are available. I'm going to look for the one that says Retro Joysticks, because that's the... Bluetooth number, and I'm going to say pair. There's no code or anything. It should pair fairly quickly. Now it's paired successfully. Next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that the sticks are working properly with the uh, Linux that's running RetroPry here. So I'm going to go to terminal, and just to test my joysticks, I'm going to go ahead and change my directory uh, to cd back uh, front slash dev slash input okay once you're in that directory then if you just type in ls to get a list this shows you all your devices notice I have one called js0 uh, that's the device that joystick 0 basically if you have other devices connected to your Raspberry Pi you might see js1 js2 and so on so we need to find out which device is if you have multiple ones we need to find out which one it is so the way to do it is you type in um, J JS test followed by each of the joysticks. So in this case, I only have one, so I'm going to do a JS0. But if you had JS1, JS2, you might want to you know, try JS1 to test that and so on. So I'm going to test JS0 because that's all I have. And now notice the uh, screen is detecting um, all my movements. I'm going to make this window a little bit bigger. So we get a little bit better results. Okay, now as I move the stick, notice that it's showing me you know, my movements. So uh, on the first joysticks, they're mapped to axis zero and axis one, right down here. So as I move it up and down, um, axis one is getting updated. As I move it left and right, axis zero. And then on the second joystick, it's gonna be axis two and axis three, left and right, and so on. The buttons, as I press button uh, zero on the main button on the first joystick, button zero will go. And then the second joystick, 
notice that it's button number five. That's how it's mapped uh, on the OS level. And then on the device itself, I'm going to press each of these uh, buttons. You know, the, the red button is going to be pushing fire on both joysticks. So that's button uh, zero and button five simultaneously. So the red is just always mapped to uh, fire, which is zero and five on both sticks. And then the other ones are just simply buttons one, two, three, and four. Those are the <clears throat> yellow, white, green, and blue, respectively. So I know that um, my joystick's responding, and I'm all set to go as far as the OS is concerned. So I'm going to push Control-C to um, break out of that, and I'm going to go ahead and start my emulation station. Okay. So now I'm into emulation station, and the first step is to um, go to the menu. Uh, so, um, you know, whatever your menu key is, normally, you know, you have it over here, at the, uh, you know, what your menu and starts are. So go to your menu and go down to um, configure input. I'm going to go ahead and do that. It says, are you sure? I'm going to say yes. And then on my first joystick here, I'm going to press and hold down the fire button. And it's going to detect retro joysticks and it's going to come down over here. Okay, so remember, both of the joysticks that are physically connected to the device are going to be mapped to gamepad 1. Okay, so for D-pad up, I'm going to move the first joystick in the up direction. So as I move it up, notice it says access one minus. When I move down on that first joystick, it's going to be that. Then left, I'm going to move. I'm going to move right. And then for the start and select, I'm going to press the yellow and uh, white buttons respectively. So here we go. So for start, I'm going to press yellow, which is button three. And for select, I'm going to press uh, the white button which is button four. Then button A, I'm gonna press um, the fire button on the first stick because that's my main fire button. So that's button A. Notice it became button zero for the mapping. Then for button B, I'm gonna go ahead and press the uh, green button here. And for button X, I'm going to push the blue button on the device. And very important for button Y, I'm going to push the second joystick's fire button. So here we go. And remember, that's button 5, as we saw on the terminal. So that's the second uh, joystick. I'm going to map it to button Y. Okay. Now, I'm going to push the down arrow here because we don't have shoulders. But very important for the um, analog up, which is a left analog up, we're going to map these to the second joystick. So I'm going to uh, look at this joystick and I'm going to be preparing to push up, down, left, right. Okay, so here we go, analog up, I'm going to push up, which is axis 3, and then down on the joystick. Then left, and then right. Okay, that's basically it. Then I'm going to go ahead and go down all the way to OK. And I'm going to go ahead and press OK here. And make sure you say um, yes to this, so just the default. And um, that's it for the emulation setup. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and um, get out of this menu and I'm going to go ahead and come out of MLA station one minute. Okay, the next uh, step, which is should be the final step for us, is we need to set up RetroArch so that it works correctly uh, with this mapping that we set up. So, um, you know, in the, um, you know, just start your file explorer go to the opt menu under RetroPie, config, 
and this is the emulator that I want to set up today 2600 so you'll see you'll have a retro arch config file now um, in the documentation that came with the device or on the on the um, you'll notice that there is a um, I'm gonna go ahead and sorry about that I meant to so this just uh, I created this file and I copied pasted from the documentation some of the mappings so basically it was uh, these items okay and these are the mappings we need to use uh, in our retroarch notice that uh, the index for the second joystick um, becomes the joystick 0 JS0 in your case if for some reason you instead of JS0 your device was mapped to JS1 then you want to make sure you change this to 1 or if it's JS2 you want to change this to 2 the rest of the items should be correct based on the buttons that we just mapped um, so button 5 was uh, the seconds player and, and these were the axes for the second player that we had set up. Um, so the only one that might be different in your case would be this index based on um, that JS test command, which device was responding to your joysticks, okay? But otherwise, the rest of these are okay. So what you want to do is, uh, you know, jot these down. You have them in the manual as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close this window. And then... Um, you know, your retroarch.cfg uh, file is the one that you want to um, edit. So I'm going to go ahead and edit that one. And, I've, and I have already put the changes in here. So find those lines uh, that, we, you know, I was showing you, for example, um, player one. Here's input player 10. I have to unfortunately scroll down to get to the ones that we're looking for so let's do that real quick here it's tough to do with one hand okay here's player one okay so here's the information uh, that you're looking for so I'm gonna go to player two actually because that was one of the ones that I had that I needed you guys to edit so here's player two okay so player two uh, notice that uh, you know B button is mapped to 5 like we just uh, showed you and then here's the axis which has the plus 3 um, and then we have um, the um, index let me see where is the index they're in alphabetical order so Okay, here's the right and the left. Here's plus two for the right. Here's minus three for the up. And um, anyway, just go find the lines that were in that other uh, documentation that I showed you and update them accordingly. Once you do that, uh, you want to save the file and uh, that's your RetroArch modified file. And uh, there you have it. The rest of it should be good to go. I'm going to go ahead and start uh, Emulation Station again. And let's give it a go. So here we go. I'm going to start my Atari 2600 emulator. And a good two-player one to test is Combat. And what's nice is uh, we've mapped uh, the white and yellow buttons to start and select. So as I press the yellow button, it'll start. Uh, the white button will let me pick different, uh, you know, just this, like the select button. So I'm going to go ahead and push start, which is a yellow button. And now if I move my stick one, notice that's my player one. The fire button's working. And then player two. I'm moving it up and down here it is and the fire button is working and there you have it i hope this helps good luck and leave your comments and let me know